Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge between Jethro T. Boots, the not the not celebrated and not particularly well known Jethro T. Boots, eighty proof Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. In other words, CVS Pharmacy House brand. <laughs> and some people told me we can't get that because in my state. Only liquor stores can sell alcohol, and, and I understand that they are states that have that regulation. In Louisiana, every store that sells uh, any kind of food items, whatever sells liquor, any gas station. So it's so common. All right. Versus Jack Daniels number seven. This company has been in business since 1866. It's been owned by Brown Foreman since 1956. So they have been under the ownership of a separate company for 61 years and they were independent for 90 years. Okay, uh, this is the green label. Notice it doesn't say old number seven, it says number seven. And if you take this label and compare it to the Black label, the Jack Daniels old number seven. It's an entirely different label, really. It's got different pictures. The lettering is different. Everything's different. This one has a picture of the distillery, other uh, facilities and whatnot. Um, oh, no, that's um, little tags about the... the um, Bourbon, sorry, it's got list of gold medals it won over the years. So it's like an old time label. It's saying uh, St. Louis that was at the World's Fair in 1904. I believe that's when they introduced ice cream cone, ice cream cones as well. Liège, Belgium, uh, Anglo American Exposition in London, Brussels, 1954, gold medal in with gold medal with palm leaves. Gold medal with palm leaves. That's an extra gold medal, special gold at Amsterdam, 1981. And then there's a story in the back about Jack Daniels, the founder. So it's um, <clears throat> a lot different looking bottle. Now, my assumption, oh, and I wanted to start it right at 5.30 Central Time, but I was looking at all the baseball trades. Never even got to watch the baseball highlights from last night yet. I'll try to do that after this. Um, I was watching some games yesterday evening, night. Um, I assume, oh, one more thing. Now, there's a guy that watches my videos. He knows who he is. I'm not going to name him. <laughs> He's telling me, oh, I have I drink beer all day long. I said, what do you mean? What do you mean you drink it all day long? I don't, oh, like nine, ten beers a day, and then I stay at home all day. I don't work. I do nothing. And, um, uh, I used to smoke marijuana. I got in trouble. I had to give that up because I was on probation. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> this channel ain't about all that, okay? This channel is about going to work, getting a job, not sitting at home all day, you know, definitely not smoking marijuana. I've talked to too many marijuana smokers that are like, there ain't nothing wrong with it, man. It's all good. And it's like, what do you do all day? Oh, nothing. You know, I was like, right. That's why it's good for you because you do nothing all day. I don't want to get into a debate about marijuana because I'm going to have 200 people commenting about, you know, I smoke marijuana every day and I'm not addicted and all this and um, it's good for me and I am not. I even have an upcoming chapter on my um, Beginner's Guide to Right Wing Politics about We Shall Overcome. Uh, no, it's called um, Just Say No to Federal Drug Laws. Doesn't address state drug law. I don't want to get into all that. So I, I don't support drug use, abuse, drug abuse is what I call it. Um, but I have a different view about the laws, whatever. All right. But this business about all of that, I'm thinking, hey, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Go get help. You know, you're recognizing the problem. You're telling me you can't stop. Then don't join the chats. Or the hangouts, okay? Maybe you want to do something else, like drink some orange juice by itself. 
milk, water. And you're asking me, is nine or 10 beers a week, a, a day a lot? I said, well, you know, I drank 22 beers a week and people are saying that's too much. Okay, so that's 22 a week, maybe 24 on an off week. And we're talking about 12 ounce servings. I'm not doing all this cheating, like saying, oh, it's a 40 ounce, so that counts for one beer. Uh -uh, no way, I don't do that. It's a hobby and it's an interest, interest okay? Beer, wine, liquor is an interest. It's not a weakness for me. I don't have to have it, okay? Like it, but I don't have like these urges for it. Okay, get that straight. I mean, I have urges to eat food. You get hungry. That's an urge. You're going to have that unless you have some kind of eating disorder or like in your, which is usually a mental disorder because you want to eat if your body wants to eat. Okay. Well, anyway, enough of that. But that's the story here. You're not going to join the hangouts. You need to go join a different hangout, you know, like psychotherapy from a good, um, a good psychotherapeutical approach not psychoanalysis because then you'd be wasting all your time talking about well when you were three what kind of anxiety did you have you know and let's interpret that <laughs> yeah let's do behavioral modification maybe a you know some cognitive behavioral modification might work now so let's get into this but i just wanted to talk about that because it's like uh -uh. i've had this problem before now it's like, it's really not my problem, but I've encountered the problem. I had a guy years ago, you might remember him. He was all into the hangouts. Yeah, yeah. But he started telling me, oh, yeah, I drink all the time. I passed out. I had to go to the hospital. My mother wants me out the house. I was like, you know, forget the hangouts, okay? This channel is not a vehicle for your self-destruction. I'm sorry. You know, I don't want to know what beers you're drinking, and I don't want to know about all of this. I want to know that you're getting some kind of treatment, you know, because I know I worked with a guy. I worked with a guy last year. He died last August. Okay. So a year ago this month, he died, died like he's dead. He's no longer alive. Why is that? Because he drank a bottle of this every day, not Jack Daniels. He was, he had, a, he was a lot more high quality drunk, I guess, compared to Jack Daniels. He drank Crown Royal every day, but still it's total insanity. He died at 49 years old, lost his job. His wife, he could, she couldn't control what he was doing. So, I mean, if people think that's funny, or oh, that's cute, or that's some kind of lifestyle to admire, you, you're watching the wrong channel. Let me promise you that. They got a lot of these irresponsible drinking channels where people guzzle stuff and get in trouble and do stupid things. You, I wouldn't recommend watching it, but they, they're, they're there if that's your interest area. This ain't it. Okay, now you say, oh, it's Dawn Busters. It's in the morning. Yeah, but <laughs> this is it for the day. These two little one and a half ounce samples. I do that because I like to see the sun come up. It's convenient. I can be done with it. I don't have to think about, oh, I forgot to do Dawn. I forgot to do the taste challenge. I got busy with other stuff. It's done. I wake up very early, generally, you know, so. <laughs> I was doing, uh, uh, doing a beer tasting with somebody Saturday, and he was telling me, oh, I felt pretty hangover. To, what did he tell, tell me? I felt really hungover this morning because of last night, and I'm thinking, I, I don't want to be part of that. I mean, I'll do the beer tastings with you, and we'll – but this business of getting into this sick, cyclical heavy drinking and you telling me you got a hangover and all this, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'd rather test out hot sauce. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay. I'd rather play Risk Online. You know, you try to take over the world or go fool with comic books. Like, call DC Comics again and ask them why these books are not coming in. I had the subscription all these years and the books are not coming in. I'm gonna set up the chat. And uh, 
they say, will we send in a replacement? I think somebody in the post office is stealing the books. What else could it be? All these years, since 1996, I had, um, yeah, I know you're never hung over. And you know why. That's not, you know, you can laugh it off and get defensive or whatever. I mean, that's your business. When it comes to that kind of stuff, I operate from more like from a scared straight approach, not a, um, oh, yeah, you might want to um, work on that. You might want to try to get that straight. No, my I'm more like aggressive with that kind of stuff. OK, like. It ain't cute. It's stupid. It's, it's asinine, honestly. OK. Um, what I always tell people when they make comments on my videos. Still got these internet problems. I've been watching other Hangouts. They got the same problems, man. And I was talking to one of the people last night. He says, insanity. You know, they keep changing all these platforms and formats and thing keeps crashing. And I was watching a Hangout yesterday, the replay. Headphones, no headphones. Using their iPhone, desktop, laptop. Didn't matter. Just problems crop up. Can't hear people. Voice goes wobbly, whatever. It doesn't matter what they use. I mean, so I'm going to try to do another Google Chrome Hangout maybe later as just a test. And I'll, uh, you know, like run it, see what happens. But um, I keep updating the Chrome. I have to keep updating until it reaches a, I don't know what it, no one knows what to do. <laughs> Even the people telling me what to do didn't know what to do. Oh. Even the people telling me what to do didn't know what to do because it happened to them. So, all right. They're the same color, right? It's just like the Jack Daniels old number seven. And I was shocked by that because, um, well, come on, load. See, like, there it is. Now, look, of course, that could be an Internet Explorer problem. It's so unfavorable in my experience with it. I thought, you know, Jack Daniels' old number seven was going to just destroy Jethro T. Boots. But uh, that was not the case. Uh, showing another ad. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay. <laughs> so um, it was a tie. And I couldn't even tell them apart. So that was a weird, really weird and um, unusual situation. I was thinking, what is this, you know? Uh, but if it would have lost, it'd have been out of the competition. So if, if ancient, if Jethro T. Boots loses today, then you won't see Jethro T. Boots anymore, okay? I already got it mixed up enough. I don't remember which is which. Okay, got it on a low setting. So um, I'm going to read the comments. You know, you'd think Jack Daniels was 20. Th this is a liter bottle, so it was like $30 for this bottle, and the Jethro T. Boots was $8.99 with a CVS card. I don't, I didn't have a CVS card because I never go to CVS. So not that I have something against CVS, I just never go. And um, so it was like 50 cents more, so like nine fifty. But um still it's very inexpensive jack daniels is charcoal mellow they don't say filter but they this you they use euphemisms over there okay for legal reasons also they said like they said they don't give an age statement because you have to pay a tax on a certain age that's what the guide said so if you declare an age as a tax you have to pay or something I was saying, what does that mean? I don't understand it. But then they were saying they don't filter it through charcoal. They they mellow it. 
I said, but isn't that the same thing? He said, yeah, we call it filtering. Uh, and then somebody on the tour said, well, I find Jack Daniels is kind of harsh. He said, we don't use that term harsh. We say bold. Okay. Bold. I understand that. Then they, they were saying uh, how they use different barrels. Like if you drink a Jack Daniels, it's not coming from a single barrel. It's That's almost every whiskey. You know, you, they'll sell those single barrel versions. But they'll take top floor, middle floor, bottom floor barrels, and they mix them all together until they get the proper consistency for what they call Jack Daniels, okay? One might be too sweet, one might be too bitter, one might be too dry, one might be too harsh, one might be too whatever. I don't know. They got tasters that are experts. They can get it all fine, fine down to a point where they know how to mix the barrels, and then they got their batch. And we're talking about million, you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons, more than likely. Same thing with, like, say, like this shirt I'm wearing, Budweiser. They're not just taking it out of one aging tank, okay? They mix all these tanks together to get the proper Budweiser consistency. They just keep bringing it down to the, the that middle range, right? That where they hit Budweiser. One's too bitter, one's too sweet, whatever. But they don't call it mixing. Oh, blending. He said, we don't blend Jack Daniels. I said, that's what that's called. Just like in Canada, they have blended whiskey. Oh, no, we call it mingling. <laughs> I said, okay, so you mingle it. Other people blend it. He said, blend means you put something in a blender and you turn the blender on. I said, that's a way, you know, I'm saying to myself, that's a way to blend. That's not the only way to blend, to put stuff in a blender. He was very aggressive in defense of his brand. And I think that's probably his training they tell them, defend the brand at all costs. Be nice, but be assertive. So they weren't take, they, it was an interesting tour in a way because they would just tell you, like lecture you, you're wrong. <laughs> the customer is not always right on a Jack Daniels tour. <laughs> Let's see what the comments say. This could be interesting. Um, and if I, get, if I get kicked off, I'll come back on. I mean, but I don't think that'll happen, but it could. Because I've been seeing this across the board on these hangouts, just problems, problems. Good morning, Ron, says John and Neil. Good morning. Maxwell says, Ron, are you work who are you working for? Huh. Uh, not Jack Daniels, apparently. Mexican connection. I think the JD Green label is going down in the challenge. Oh, I don't know. No, we lost him. He's back. Video era, yes. Boot the boots. Okay. You better go boot the, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, so I'm not going to entertain it. Okay, I'm not. The guy that died, We I tried to tell him. You know, he's telling me, I'm going to treatment. Good. So he can get his job back. I'm going to treatment. I said, that's good. He, then he tells me, but I'm still drinking. I said, oh, yeah, that's going to work. That's really going to work. Going to work you into the graveyard, which it did. I don't know what kind of psychological disorder. I don't want to say disorder because that sort of like makes an excuse for people. I don't know what kind of psychological disturbance or disruption he had that was driving him to this drinking. But like they used to say in the Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedia, it was a very, I noticed, I read the whole encyclopedia, you know, A to Z. It took me a year or two. You know, anything about social studies, history, government, I read it. Now, maybe not science articles or art, but they were saying almost all of these drug and alcohol addictions are rooted in psychological problems. Whereas a lot of the modern encyclopedias will say, oh, it's just an illness. It's a disease. You no, know, a disease is like cancer. You're just going about your business and you get sick. You, you pour the you are pouring the liquor. You're pouring the beer. You're putting it in your hand and you're drinking it. Okay, so you have culpability in it. I'm not saying you're totally culpable, but you have culpability. Carol says, uh, when is the next group examination? Maybe I can stay up. It's usually on Wednesday nights, right? Yeah, this Wednesday night, it's at um, 6.30 Central Time for the United States. I don't know, I don't know uh, what time that would be in Poland. It is a disorder. Okay. Um, 
but it's not a disorder where the person is totally out of they're not out of a range where they can do something about it okay well people love that alcoholics anonymous approach because then nothing's their fault you see they can say oh I don't want to get into all that. <clears throat> all right, long time viewer from Georgia, currently in Tallahassee, Florida. It's crazy to 32 ounce maximum on beers, huh? Says Skylar Fuller. Yeah, and I hate that maximum. It's dumb. That's because they said they don't want people in Florida buying too much alcohol at a time. So you can't buy a 40 ounce. Well, what? But but you could buy two 32 ounces. So now it's 64 ounces. So yeah, it really solves the problem. And you can't buy six packs of the tall cans. You can only buy four packs. It really makes sense. Good job, Florida. For uh totally missing the point of what you're trying to do. What do you work? I mean, well, I retired from teaching high school. I just work part-time at a store, okay? Seven hours ahead? Whoa, that's kind of late. <laughs> you could join if you want. You got to connect to me on Google Plus. Though that I've had people in the past say, I want to join, I want to join. They never connect to me on Google Plus, okay? Therefore, I have no way to invite them. <laughs> I had no way to contact them. And then they say, you don't want me to join? I'm mad at you. And I'm like, no, do you understand? It's like a person telling me, hey, call me. Okay, well, you never gave me your number. Why you don't call me? I don't have your number. You don't like me. I don't have your number. What's the problem? I don't have your number. I cannot contact you. you it's like they don't grasp these things. Okay. It's very woody. I was talking to my friend Saturday, and he was saying, I get what you mean about that chewing on a toothpick thing. I said, right, right. Because we tasted Blanton's, and he was all excited because he paid 50 bucks for that bottle of Blanton's. And then I was saying, he was going on and on, I was talking about Buffalo Trace, and he said, I don't like Buffalo Trace, which is like $29 a bottle compared to 50 I said, well, don't you realize this is made at Buffalo Trace? No, he didn't realize that. <laughs> then he's, his face was a funny look on his face. Then we started drinking it. He said, oh, it tastes like Buffalo Trace. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's like an upgraded upgraded version. It's a different, It's it's, but the base is the Buffalo Trace, the base. And it, he kept commenting on that. We didn't, we didn't record it. I didn't bring my camera, but he was saying, ah, stuff tastes like Buffalo Trace. It's all wood, wood. Everything's wood with this stuff. It was, it was funny to watch him uh, talk about it. Now, see, this one's a lot sweeter. Oh, my goodness. Wood. Wood. I mean, yeah, you get dried flowers and uh, candied fruit a little bit and that kind of stuff. The dried, you know, that fruitcake fruit. But the predominant is wood. Okay, here. Sugar. Sweet, very sweet brown sugar. And I'm not opposed to sugar. I mean, I put some in my coffee this morning, white, you know, refined sugar. But they, they don't they don't smell the same. I'm sorry. Oh, which smell is better? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a better, right? It's just they're different. Different doesn't mean one has to be better. I might, maybe I prefer the wood. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't, I couldn't really make a fair call with that. Honestly, taste. Wow, that is a very corn. That is a corn based taste. Let me tell you. Well, you know, bourbon has to be at least 51% corn. Both of these are bourbons. Yeah, I know Jack Daniels is marketed as Tennessee whiskey, but it's a bourbon. They sit there on the tour and tell you for 30 minutes how it's a bourbon. And then say, but since we charcoal filter, it's not a bourbon. Hmm. I already talked about that. That has no bearing on whether it's a bourbon or not. It'd be like if you made a chocolate cake. You say, this is a pure chocolate cake. It's all real chocolate and it's made from scratch. It uses authentic ingredients. This is a chocolate cake. Now we're going to put white frosting on it so therefore it's not a chocolate cake anymore no it's still a chocolate cake it just has white frosting on it okay and that's still a bourbon it's just given a charcoal filtered treatment just like the jim beam choice so don't 
Uh, all right, enough of that. No more ranting. No more ranting and raving wrong. Wood, 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 wood. <laughs> What's the difference between Jack Daniel Black Label and Jack Daniel Green Label? Aside from the label, not a lot. It's the same recipe. But the aging is not as long, apparently, for the green. Well, it's at least four years because it would give an age statement. If it's less than four years, they've got to put on there. Um, see the sun is coming up? They got to put on there um, 36 months or whatever. So it ha if it's less than 48 months, it has to have an age statement. It doesn't say that it's... Um, um, I believe it's sour mash, is it not? It doesn't s yeah, sour mash. Look at all those metals. The boots. Is it sour mash? Yep. Those are both sour mash whiskeys. And you can look that up. It's something that Dr. James Crow kind of started using back in the 1830s he thought it worked better than many whiskey producers adopted it not all many there's wood you're picking up that barrel but this is sugary sweet see i think this is coming from the sazerac this is I went on that tour at, Blant at uh, Blanton's. I could smell, you know, I didn't taste the Blanton's in the bottling room, but I could smell it. You know, it's such a strong smell. I had that distinctive smell. And then I was in the uh, ancient age slash um, Buffalo Trace Barrel House, and you could smell. And when I opened that bottle of ancient age, I was like, yeah, it smells like that, sort of like a Sazerac house style. And then when I was at Barton, Earlier in the day, I was in their barrel house, and I tried that very old Barton and the, um, what was that other one they had, that um, little higher quality one, um, Weller, yeah, Weller. And they had like a commonality, like a house, we, we talked about that, a house style, like stone beers have a house style. You know, like Marvel Comics years ago always had a house style with artwork. They would say, you got to draw like this. <laughs> DC had their own style. I never could quite decide which I preferred. Um, they were both very distinctive. This one make it, is making me think they're medium body. It's a pretty dry, it's not a long, long finish. This one has a little peppery note. See that it's got that peppery. I noticed that uh, Sazerac, who is Buffalo, Sazerac is Buffalo Trace. Sazerac is Barton. Sazerac is <laughs> um, Blanton. Sazerac is Eagle Rare. Sazerac is Pappy Van Winkle. So when people say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you ought to check the website because you're going to be shocked. It's all the same company. But they're into that rye, man. They like, they like making stuff with a higher rye mash bill. They're just into that. But this is kind of hard to call, but I think, now, which one's better? Mm. You know, as they sat on this desk, this big desk, this big black leather top desk, and they breathe, they're starting to bring out a lot more. Um, I think if I added an ice cube, it would bring out even more character. But there's such a little bit in there, I'm not going to do that. Mm, 
I've been earlier, but usually not so long as this, the middle of the night here. Sorry for the caps lock. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, don't you hate when some people do that? They got to write everything in all capital letters. It's like, why you got to do that? <laughs> Morning from Miami, says Frederick Byram. Best major league baseball stadium maybe only after Fenway Park. <clears throat> I don't know about all that, but I um, have been to the Miami Marlins ballpark, what, five times now? since 2012 oh it's a dynamite park i keep i brought one friend jordan with me he, he liked it he took a picture of me falling asleep i mean i fell asleep with that game we go eat this huge cuban meal then we go to this noon game we had gotten only four hours of sleep the night before because we had to drive from tampa and he I don't know, he does things that are inexplicable like i said why are you waking us up at six in the morning He's thinking it's an all-day ride to Miami. I said, it doesn't take that long. But anyway, ate that big meal. I was knocked out. I kept falling asleep sitting in the chair at the stadium. But it's an awesome stadium, you know. The ticket prices are cheap. Like, last year I got, I went to two games and I got tickets for $5 a piece. Yes. Kind of cheap. Um on the street. I didn't use Ticketmaster. I used Streetmaster. And they were trying to hustle me. The guy's like, man, how do you think you're going to get a $5 ticket? I said, because I'll find somebody that's desperate to sell it. And I know you didn't probably even they working for a syndicate. I know these, you always see the same guy. You go to any major league stadium, you always see the same guys out there. And then there's always some guy kind of like a pit boss. He's walking around watching them. He's like, you ain't getting a five dollar ticket. I said, well, I'll just go to the to the window and buy one for eleven. I mean, I'm sure I can handle it. So I just waited. It was like ten minutes for the game. He's like, okay, all right, man, all right, all right, you got me, you got me. No, he said, I got you, I got you. He, I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> I noticed in Milwaukee at the Brewers, they always have the same guy walking around. He's older. He's like in his seventies now, wearing shorts, always wearing shorts. And I said, that's the boss. I told my friend, I said, that's the boss. I told him that before we got there. I said, you're going to see this guy? He's the boss. He's running the, the game. They're going to always defer to him. Watch. They used to be like that in New Orleans. This old guy that rode around in his little power chair. He used to walk around. He got really old. Calling Papa. Nobody messed with Papa, okay? I mean, I don't know who Papa worked for. Obviously, it was people above him. But he was the one in that little going around checking on everybody. And it's illegal to sell tickets on the street in New Orleans in front of the Superdome for Saints games or Tulane. Well, they don't play there anymore. Tulane got their own stadium. But the cops never notice those guys. It's like they can't see them. They can see other people and they bust them, but they don't see these guys. I say, yeah, and that's something. They never get in trouble. Huh, strange. Um, I'm going to call it I mean it's close it is close and what is that telling you I do think the one here is better but it is not way better. It is a little bit better. But I wouldn't pay $25 a bottle when I could get the Jethro T Boost for $8.99 better. I don't believe so. But I'll probably never buy either a bottle again since I just try to, I'm like craft beer. I'm just like all these other people jumping from brand to brand, brand to brand, not loyal. <laughs> Trying everything. I think, mm, I think this is the Jack Daniels, and I think it's better. I think it's the Jack Daniels green label, the number seven. I'm starting to think the number seven, the green label, is an older version of Jack Daniels. But 
Of course, take into account neither one is the original recipe. Neither the black label nor the green label is the original. The recipe has been changed. They used to be 90 proof. I know I went on, they have all the old bottles back to the 1870s at the distillery, you know, in a museum. They probably have boxes full of these old bottles. A fantastic bottle display in the museum. It's amazing. But um, they were always 90 proof. And then if you notice in the, around the last 30 years, they go to 86 proof or whatever, and then it's 80 proof. So they dropped it down slowly to 80 and they figured people wouldn't notice. Some people did notice, most people didn't. The sales actually went up. But um, I don't know, it seemed like the really old, 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 old bottles with a green label. And then somebody told me, I think my father told me, I thought it was green label. I said, no, it's black. Oh, it is. <laughs> So the green label's not common anymore. It used to be in every store. Now you only see it in a few states. Can't even get it in Louisiana. Somebody bought that green label for me in Beaumont, <laughs> Beaumont, Texas, and gave it to me as a birthday present. All right, here we go. Now I'm a little nervous. Now remember, if Jethro T. Boots loses, it's out <laughs> of the contest. If Jack Daniels Green Label loses, it's got one contest left because it, Jack Daniels has not been performing too well. Now, other people are maybe keeping better count than me on this. I thought it had lost twice, the Green Label. I know the Black Label did. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Jack Daniels, I put JD7 on that. Jack Daniels, number seven. Oh, well, Jethro T. Boots, you couldn't make it. You couldn't make the grade. But, you know, you did okay for a budget bourbon. Yep, you're like Randall Tex Cobb. You didn't win, but you never got knocked out. You just took a beat <laughs> for 15 rounds, or was it 12 rounds? That was a miserable fight to watch. Remember Howard Cosell just kept saying, oh, the brutality, oh, the horror of this fight. <laughs> the inhumanity it was pretty bad. Frederick says, morning from Miami. Oh. What are your top, what are you, he meant the right, what are your top three stadiums then? I did break the wrong call streak. I got it right today. And I thought right at the very first taste, at the very first taste, I thought Jack Daniels was Jack Daniels. To me, now this is gonna sound mad, crazy, totally irresponsible, People would be angry. But I, to me, I find a green label. <laughs> Don't say it on the internet. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> to me, I find the green label is a little better than the black label, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Some people are saying, please tell me you didn't just say that. Hey, what? Well, I've been drinking both. To me, the green label's better. Not way better, but it's just, some, just something about it. It's got a little some little extra cachet about it. <laughs> John O'Neill says, so Jack Daniels won, but just barely. That's right. It didn't win by a lot. It won by, I guess you could say, a split decision if, if it was a boxing match. No knockouts. No TKOs and no straight knockouts. Oh no, both people went the full, went all 12 rounds. Still sounds like Jethro T. Boots is the better value. It's the better value if you're willing to make the trade off. It's all about trade offs, of which they would show all young people that TV show from the early 80s on PBS, Trade Offs. That was a great show because it was saying, it was really about conflicts. Everything you do in life is sort of like a conflict and you have to make a trade off. You can't do both. It's like people want to eat their cake. They, they have a piece of cake from the last night and they got it in the fridge and they want to eat it, but then they still want to have it for later. You know, I want to eat the cake this morning, but I want to have it after lunch also. Well, you can't eat the cake this morning and still have it after lunch. The cake is gone, okay? Now you can't have it. It's gone. You ate it. 
Well, that was that would be an approach approach conflict because either way it goes, you still have to make a choice. But either choice you make is approach choice. In the morning you eat the cake, you enjoy it. In the evening after or in the afternoon after lunch you eat the cake, you enjoy it. So that's an approach approach conflict. And I talked about that in the psychological videos I did. You got four types of conflicts. I didn't make this up. I read about it. You got approach approach, avoid avoid. Avoid, avoid is either choice you make is terrible. It's like you, you've you been given the death penalty and, it, and they say, well, you could either be shot by a firing squad or given an electric chair. Oh, what a good choice. Thanks for get, letting me choose, but either choice you make is bad. Then you have approach avoidance. The choice you make will have a good part and a bad part to it. Like you could eat any food you want. Well, that's good because you enjoy all the food. It tastes so good. What's the avoidance part? Well, you're going to get fat, overweight, unhealthy. So there's repercussions. So that's the trade off. Approach eat everything you want, total enjoyment, hedonism. The avoidance part, you're going to get sick. It's not going to, so you got to do the trade offs. And then the most common conflict is double approach avoidance. Most choices in life are double approach avoidance choices. There's good and bad to both choices. Right? Okay. I can message Bud and say how I love all the products and maybe get something. You could. This shirt was not given to me by me saying I like Budweiser products. I was at a baseball game in at southeastern Louisiana and um they have these fan contests where they say, uh, oh, who can be the first person to guess this song title and the artist? And they play it. And I'm right above, I sit right above where that hospitality table is. So I just got up and went down there real quick and said, whatever it was, Edge of 17, Stevie Nicks, whatever. Oh, right. You get the shirt. And then one time they were just giving shirts away, designated driver, because Southeastern Louisiana, Sports is sponsored by Champagne Beverages, which is the distributor for Anheuser-Busch on the North Shore in the Florida parishes of Louisiana, north of Lake Pontchartrain and Maurepas. Lakes Pontchartrain and Maurepas, so they give a lot of stuff away. I did write an email to Paps one time years ago saying, just before video reviews, in case people think I was trying to get free stuff for my video reviews, which I, I was not. I just said, I want to let you know, I, I enjoy Pops Blue Ribbon, even though it's not too popular, you know, I, I, I like it. And I always tell people they should drink it if they like beer, because it's good. It's a good value. And they were so happy to hear that. They sent me a whole big box of stuff, <laughs> shirts, a cap, bumper stickers like the one back there on the wall. And I brought, they brought, they sent me two bumper stickers and I, I sent one, I, br I brought one to Henry's bar on Magazine Street in New Orleans because they always had paps on draft. Was it draft? They just had bottles. I always had specials with paps. I'm talking about like 17 years ago, they had that. They were like the big paps bar in New Orleans. So um, I said, I thought y'all might want to have this bumper sticker. Oh yeah, that's great. We're going to put it up there because they had so many other paps memories promotional stuff on the wall. Has Ancient Age had three strikes or is it still in the running? Um, it didn't have three strikes. I just went through the thing with Ancient Age is I challenged everything against it already. You know what I mean? It, it fought everybody, but it was in the race. Yeah, it didn't have three strikes. And it's not a big deal with Jethro T. Boots because the only one I had left to go up against was uh, just a few things like Old Granddad, Old Granddad Bonded, and um, the Old Crow, the regular Old Crow. Might have been able to hang with Old Crow, but I don't know. Old Crow's pretty good, so to me. William, uh, I mean, Bill um, McIntosh said, no, nah, he didn't like Old Crow. He, he wouldn't buy it again. Oh, well. Hey, you win some, you lose some. Sorry, Jethro T. Boots, but um, I think it does pretty well on the shelf over there at CVS, so they're not worried about my little obscure taste challenges on the internet. I'm pretty sure they could care less. Um, looking at these messages, Trev's Travel Tales. I watch Trev's. I need to update my uh, channel where I put 
recommended other channels. I haven't done that in years. So probably a lot of people I do hangouts with or watch their reviews, they probably think I'm insulting them because I don't put that. I just never, I get distracted, you know, I don't, I don't ever think about doing that. But I'm going to try to make some time today to update that. You know, like Erica Lyons fan and Jerry Fort and all of them. I need to put that in uh, Massachusetts beer reviews. I need to put that on there. Trails Travel Tales said, um, cheers, Ron. Hope all is well. Beer is okay. Yeah, oh, it's going pretty well over here. And you said the beer is okay. I had it out the bottle, not the can, but that Quilms. I thought the Quilms was good. And then they're talking about my taste challenges and that coffee stout I had from Alabama. Okay, well, that's it for this. It's over. Enough jibber jabber. <laughs> and um, I'm going to upload a video in a few minutes after I watch the after I watch the baseball highlights because when you do an upload it slows down your system it will kind of slow it down a little bit um, I'm gonna do the what am I uploading it's oh yeah the Ber the dry hot Berliner Weisse from Sierra Nevada hey that was a that, well I don't, don't want to say too much that was a uh, and uh, I was uh, because I don't even uh, if I say you won't watch it right so you have to watch to see what I said about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching this video production. And let's see what's coming up. Well, I guess it'll be maybe a few weeks before I do another Dawn Busters because I got to drink down this stash. So it could be a little while. We haven't, like John and Neil's watching, or he was watching. We have a um, examination coming up for old granddad. He went and bought a bottle of old granddad. So. I'm thinking maybe, maybe Friday night or Friday afternoon at 5.30, something. Lance Delush does those Friday hangouts. I might join that. But then there'll always be a baseball game I want to watch. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to do both. I'm, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But, uh, John, we're going to do that soon, okay? Like, like much sooner than we're going to do it later. All right. Thanks, folks. You take care and have a good, exciting. Well, maybe it won't be exciting, but have a good day at least. <laughs>